Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. All right, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good today. Happy Thursday. It is a lot going down. So if you guys do not know, this morning we woke up to news of DJ MV basically looking at getting locked up if he refuses to cooperate with the courts. So what's going down is this. Basically, he can end up behind bars if he does not fulfill his obligations of a court-ordered subpoena related to his former real estate partner, Cesar Pena, in the bankruptcy case. And so what's being stated is that basically he has until January 8th to produce all the documents requested by a court-appointed trustee overseeing Pena's company, Warehouse LLC, which filed for bankruptcy in August. If he fails to comply, DJ Envy, whose real name is Rashawn Casey, could be arrested and forced to sit down for a deposition in New Jersey's bankruptcy court or possibly face other sanctions. Sanctions. The U.S. bankruptcy judge Rosemary Gambarella approved a motion from the trustee's attorney on Wednesday, December 20th, claiming that Envy already missed the November 28th deadline to provide documents related to warehouse, as well as the company behind an apartment complex that Pina owned. Judge Gambarella's new order also applies to Pina, his wife Jennifer Pina as well. They were served with subpoenas when meeting with the trustees on November 10th to have everything together by January 8th. If they don't, Judge Gambarella, she may hold a hearing to address appropriate sanctions against Cesar Pena, Jennifer, and Rashawn Casey for contempt of this court's order, including but not limited to an order for arrest to bring the parties to the United States Bankruptcy Court. So this situation is very real. Um, DJ Envy can try to ignore it and, you know, talk on The Breakfast Club like everything is honky-dory, but it looks like the ball is still rolling for all of them. Now, another thing that's very interesting is that DJ Envy recently switched lawyers, and people are also noticing that he's not doing his, you know, 12 days of Christmas with his wife. I guess every year he gives his wife a gift every day until Christmas, and they're really high-end, expensive gifts. A lot of his fans have been noticing that he's not doing that this year. And Tony the Closure was one of the ones who released the information on his lawyer who had been defending him this whole time quitting. So y'all go ahead and check this out. He is a victim, just like the other alleged victims are in connection with the scam. Well, one thing we know for sure about DJ Envy and Caesar Pena is that they don't like paying people and they like doing funny stuff with their money. And something must be going on because this recent motion right here by uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Massimo, the uh, the slick hair lawyer, the guy that you know said DJ Envy was a victim. Yeah, he's he's actually withdrawn from the case, and he's doing this right before Christmas. So that must mean he's owed some money or something, because there's no way uh, with all the motions and everything that's like in, coming in the next couple of weeks and and very big decisions that are lingering for this case that DJ Envy will be switching attorneys right now. Money must be running low. Uh, I haven't seen the 12 Days of Christmas. Ooh, it must be a scam. Oh my God, real estate Rico. <laughs> yeah, you see the work, puto. You see the work. People say they bought in because of Envy's reputation. Does he not have some responsibility? Absolutely not. The only reason why Envy is sued is to sensationalize the case. Bring us to a powerful Manhattan real estate attorney. He says the radio personality lost half a million dollars to the Pinas in an investment deal to transform this vacant school building in Patterson into rental units. He is a victim, just like the other alleged victims are in connection with the scam. Why, if he's a victim, hasn't he filed a lawsuit against the Pinas? He has a legal right to file whenever he deems fit. He is now contending with cases that are being filed every day improperly against him. Why not come out on his radio show and warn other alleged victims if he feels that he was? This is a, it's an ongoing, uh, they're ongoing litigations. 
uh, and, and there is no room for them on you know, any sort of radio show. A lot of people say they bought in because of Envy's reputation. Does he not have some responsibility? Absolutely not. The only reason why Envy is sued is to sensationalize the case. The attorney is seeking dismissals of all the law. All right, so you guys just watched that video. So what else is being reported is that basically DJ Envy, he switched up from working with Massimo D'Angelo, who is a very, very pricey attorney from the White Shoe Law Firm. Um, so now he's with another attorney, and that attorney's name is Dan Marchese of a lesser known William and Garofalo Stern LLC in Morristown, New Jersey. So it looks like he went from a more high-end, expensive lawyer to a cheaper lawyer, meaning that the money may not be money, and he cannot afford to pay that other lawyer, so he had to switch lawyers. Now, all of this is coming at a really precarious time because DJ Envy was also hit with a new federal lawsuit from two men who say that Envy's involvement in a $100 million real estate portfolio with Pena were instrumental in their decision to invest in Pena's companies. Um, the plaintiff's attorney, Alexander Satchel, who's pursuing several lawsuits against Envy and Pena, um, told Legal Affairs and Trials on Wednesday that he has significant evidence that implicates DJ Envy in Pena's financial schemes and shows that he profited from it. Sasho provided dozens of photos and video promotions of the real estate seminars, including several in which DJ Envy is alone while encouraging hopeful investors to sign up. What up, y'all? It's DJ Envy. Flipping at Jay. Join us July 31st right here at the Jacob Javits Center. We're doing a real estate seminar talking everything real estate from Airbnb to wholesaling to flipping. Not only that, you could partner with us on some deals. Make some money with us. Your partner. And we'll see you July 31st. Come on. What up, what up, what up? It's DJ Envy now. October 25th. Shout out to Caesar. Caesar and I are doing our next webinar. So if you want to learn about real estate, a lot of people have been hitting me in my DMs. Yo, Envy, my credit's finally good. Or I got to get my credit up. Hit the credit dude. He will get your credit right. But I just got my tax returns. Or I just got my stimulus check. What should I do? I got some money. What should I do? I always say real estate. And this is the perfect time. Money is cheap. So we're going to take and show you how we do a flip. We're going to purchase a crib. Show you how we purchased the crib, how much we paid, where we got it from. Then we're going to go through every process from buying the crib to demo to fixing it up to electric, plumbing, and to even selling the property. We're going to break it. You can see everything. We open it up and show you the numbers and everything. So join us October 25th. There's still limited seats available. I want to see y'all there. Just click the link in my bio. I'm DJ MV. Salute. Then he goes on to say, we also have bank statements which show the two had multiple joint bank accounts earning at least 300000 through 2021 from their joint seminars alone. alone. We anticipate that when we get the complete bank records via discovery, there will be much more evidence in that department. So now on top of that, if you guys do not know, um, reggaeton superstar Don Omar also filed a $5 million lawsuit against Flipping NJ's Cesar Pena. And he alleges unauthorized use of his name and image for real estate business promotion. A major statement in protecting personal branding and intellectual property rights as well. So it looks like Don Omar is also suing in this case. So this whole DJ MV Cesar Pena situation literally is the gift that keeps on giving because... Something is going down, and I know, like I said, DJ Envy can try and ignore it all he wants to, but it's not looking good for him. So now in other news, let's go ahead and segue into the whole Krishan and Blueface situation. Once again, Blueface and Krishan are back all over the blogs. Um, Krishan, you know, continues to put her infant in danger by literally putting him in the front seat of a car with no car seat. And she goes live to say that Blueface ambushed her, punched her in the face, put hands on her. Blueface goes live to defend his side of the story, and he's saying that that baby's not his. He does not understand why, you know, Krishan even, is even coming to his house. He's saying that the baby is Offsets, Charles Barkley, all these names that he's bringing up. And once again, they're just having this disgusting back and forth in front of this poor child. Y'all go ahead and check this out. Look, this is how she got the baby. <laughs> Look, this is how she got the baby. She in the front seat. She got the baby in the front seat. With no car seat, no nothing. It's not even my child. This child looks zero like me. This bitch is outside of my house for no reason. Shake, leave, exit left, exit right, pick one. 
Look how she got her baby. Look. <laughs> look, look how she got her baby. Shake. Shake. What are you doing at my house? All right, I'm telling you to leave. Okay. All right. What are you doing here? Look how you got your son. Look how you got your baby. Baby looks nothing like me. Baby looks zero like me. Nobody gives a fuck. You're outside of my house. What are you doing here? 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 You know why I'm here. That baby looks nothing like me. Bye. Bye. That baby looks nothing like me. That's Charles Barkley, baby. That's Offset's baby. That's K Suave's baby. That's that's uh the nigga from down the street, baby. That's come on, kid. Don't nobody know who baby that is. Oh, that's why. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? Scientifically proven. That's not my child. Get out of here, skedaddle. I can't come around here no more. You got a skedaddle, y'all. Skedaddle. That's not my baby. That's Krishan. That's Krishan Jr. That's not my child. Get out of here. Skedaddle. <laughs> Bye. Nobody gives a fuck. You're outside of my house. What are you doing here? 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 You know why I'm here. That baby looks nothing like me. Bye. Bye. That baby looks nothing like me. That's Charles Barkley, baby. That's Offset's baby. That's K Suave's baby. That's that's uh the nigga from down the street, baby. That's come on, kid. Don't nobody know who baby that is. Oh, that's why. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? Scientifically proven. That's not my child. Get out of here. Skedaddle. I can't come around here no more. You got a skedaddle, y'all. Skedaddle. That's not my baby. That's Krishan. That's Krishan Jr. That's not my child. Get out of here. Skedaddle. <laughs> Bye. Uh, whoever created this motherfucker app, what's up, y'all? This nigga inviting me to his house to drop his son off. I come while I'm getting out the car. Bro is socking me in my face. Cool. What the fuck is you telling me to pull up for? Like, why are you playing victim? What is, what is, what the fuck? So then when I called the cops... And then I went wild because I'm waiting on the cops to pull up. The nigga start recording me like, weird, coming to the car. He came to the car again. Nigga snatched his motherfucking phone because... Like, God don't like ugly. Stop playing with me and my son on this app, my nigga. What's up with you? You lucky I can't deactivate your page, bro. You're fucking weird. The hell is wrong with you? You're crashing out at 7 a.m. in the morning. That's crazy. He like, you got to... I said, I'm calling a car. Oops. I'm calling a car. That's straight. Can can I pull up with your son? He said, he said, da da. Boy, shut up. False. That's your name. Phone died. I tried. Didn't disappoint. Tomorrow. I just got out of the shower. My bad. My phone died. Hang up. Cap. Whatever. I'm still trying to, like, have him see his son. You feel me? So I sent at the studio where I'm at, like, tell him how far. You busy? Where you at? Pulling up. Pulling up. I pulled up, nigga, it's drama, nigga, like, shaking right now, bro. Let's go to this Instagram. I'm sorry, can you say that again, please? Yeah, so, boom, he's weird. He's trying to post shit on his Snapchat. He's trying to nope. be, he's just trying to be funny right now, right? Please repeat. That's cute, why is you doing that? You evil motherfucker, like, niggas evil as shit, bro, like, evil as fuck. Nigga. You can enter a destiny. Have me pull up, act like he want to see his son, bro. Really sock, trying to kept socking me. Try, no, I swear to God, I was taking my son out the car. I was getting, like, look, I brung food. Like, look, I brung food, all type of shit. So I'm trying to pick up the food bags while I'm getting my son out the car. I turn around. He still me in my mouth. I'm like, whoa, 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 what you doing? Like, whoa, 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 what you doing? Bag of food fall out. I put my son in the seat like, whoa, whoa, whoa. 
What you doing? Shorty, like, I'm just trying to really go have some fun. Not like that, but, yeah, I don't really like pulling up on niggas with my son. I don't do that, bro. If if I could just drop him off with his father because he ain't doing shit. He's telling me, oh, where you at? All right, I'm about to lead a little nigga. Get up out of here. This nigga set me up. Like, literally, start trying to stab in the face. Like, boom, boom, boom. I got no, no, we not. We not, we not looking at bitches. All right, so you guys just saw these disturbing videos. And at this point in time, when are people gonna hold Krishan accountable for the decisions that she makes? Even if he texts her and said, pull up, I wanna see you and the baby, when is she gonna stop you know, allowing him to disrespect her? How many times does somebody have to show you who they are and you keep contacting them? You keep trying to go over there like that's going to change who they are. She needs to move along. She needs to let him be. He obviously wants to have nothing to do with her and the baby. She needs to move along. She needs to stop going over there. None of this makes sense. Especially when you're going over there, y'all are fighting, y'all are filming each other, and all of this is being done in front of a child who shouldn't have to witness any of this. This is insane. From what people are saying online, they're saying that she went over there and she started a fight. He was filming her, then she went live and had food in her front seat with a bottle of Henny. Mind you, this baby's in the car. She was coming over to chill and bring the baby. A fight broke out and she snatched his phone while still on her live. She posted those texts from Blue's phone, not hers. So it looks like he sent her an Addy, but it was her sending an Addy from the studio. She took off speeding and the baby was in the back seat, not strapped in. It was all bad. I woke up watching this since 7 a.m., just clearing it up because everyone is getting their own narrative and running with it. You're welcome. So that is what somebody said in the comments section. And at this point in time, I feel like CPS needs to be involved because it just does not make sense. You know, it's like she keeps playing these dangerous games and there's a baby involved. So many people thought that the baby was gonna make her mature, get herself together. I feel like she's going in a downward spiral. She's gotten even worse as a mother. And this whole situation is just sad. And it doesn't help that he's sitting here antagonizing the situation. So now on top of that, of course, Jaden Alexis had something to say as well. So Jaden Alexis says, imagine a victim continuously pulling up on their abuser uninvited, leaving with no wounds, saying that they've been hit every time they leave with no police report. Makes no sense. Clout is running dry, so she keeps using me for a moment. And Blueface had posted that, and Jaden Alexis reposted it on her, on her stories. And here go some more exchanges between them. And in this conversation, you can clearly see where she is texting him the address to the studio. Um, she's saying, you know... She's pulling up. So at this point, people are starting to see through Krishan's games and she's getting the clown face emoji as well. This whole situation just makes no sense. But like I said, the worst part is that there's a poor innocent baby in the thick of all this nonsense with their parents. So now we're going to go ahead and segue into something else. Um, there's a model named Jaden Steele and she's coming out and she's basically saying that Method Man attacked her in the 90s. And she's also saying that this is why a lot of people are not honest about the abuse that they face in the industry, because, you know, a lot of times the police and the judges and lawyers and things like that are on the payroll or on the side of the celebrities. And so she tells her story. Somebody in the comment section said, is it Method Man? I'm just saying. And she replies back, yes. So y'all go ahead and watch this. Good day, all. Um, you guys want to know the reason why all of these people are coming forward now telling their stories and they didn't do it in the past. Well, being a model for over 12 years and being in this industry, I was physically attacked by a very large rapper in the 90s who's actually now an actor right now today. Um, this man attacked me. I defended myself. 10 squad cars were called to the hotel because we tore that bitch up. Um, 10 squad cars were called. There wasn't one police report written about the incident. I had five officers come up to my room, take a statement. Not one police report was written. I worked for attorneys at that time in New York. And because my attorneys represented the head of the record label he was on, 
they told me to pick my battles. You want to know why? That's why. All right, so you guys just watched that video of her. And again, she's saying that it's Method Man. And the comments are mixed. Some people are saying, you know, I'm glad she's telling her story and they believe her. Other people are saying, we don't care. Leave Method Man's name out of your mouth. Because again, you can't say anything about these celebrities without folks getting in their feelings as if they know these celebrities personally, okay? Um, but I get it. It's been a long time, but it's kind of sad that, you know, people are telling her to keep Method Man's name out of her mouth but she has a right to tell her story. Others are saying it's 2023, y'all need to get over it. People are pissing them off with this nonsense. People coming out every day with the story. Well, if y'all are pissed off about her story, y'all gonna be pissed off about the next story. Because if you guys do not know, Vin Diesel is now being sued for sexual battery of his assistant that took place in 2010. So this is what's going on. A former assistant to Vin Diesel sued the actor on Thursday, alleging that in 2010 he pinned her against the wall of a hotel suite, masturbated in front of her. Sada Jonansson worked for the actor in Atlanta when he was filming Fast Five when he brought her into his suite at the Regis Hotel and forced her onto his bed. According to the suit, she asked him to stop and move towards the door, but he came over and began to grope her breast and kiss her chest. He tried to pull down her underwear and she screamed and ran towards the bathroom, the suit alleged. Jonathan was unable to escape and closed her eyes, scared of scared of enraging Vin Diesel by rejecting him further and trying to disassociate herself, wishing that the assault would end. Hours later, according to the lawsuit, Samantha Vincent, Diesel's sister and the president of his company, called Jonathan and fired her. It was clear that she was being fired because she was, was no longer useful to Vin Diesel and had used her to fulfill his sexual desires. She had resisted his sexual assault, the suit alleges. Miss Jonathan felt like she was a piece of trash to be discarded. Miss Jonathan felt helpless. Her self-esteem was demolished and she questioned her own skills and whether a successful career would require her to trade her body for advancement. Diesel's representatives did not immediately respond to requests for comment. Jonathan filed the sexual battery lawsuit under California Sexual Abuse and Cover-Up Accountability Act, a 2022 law that created a one-year window to file certain lawsuits that would otherwise be outside the statute of limitations for the suit to qualify. The defendant must have engaged in an attempt to cover up at least one previous sexual assault allegations. The suit alleges that a few days before the diesel incident, Jonathan was propositioned by another survivor at the company, one race. According to the complaint, the supervisor summoned her to his hotel at St. Regis, took off his shirt and got in bed and said, come here. Appalled, Miss Jonas exited the room and hotel, the suit states. In addition to the sexual battery allegations, the suit states the claim of the gender discrimination, wrongful termination, retaliation, and negligent supervision. Vanity Fair was the first report the suit. And here go some screenshots from the suit here. So it is getting real out here. The swamp is definitely being drained and people, you know, are trying to hold other people accountable for the misdeeds that they have done. So now the latest in the Diddy situation, speaking of lawsuits, if you guys don't know, one of Cassie's really good friends, she's a singer songwriter. Um, her name is Tiffany Red, and she just did an eight minute interview basically concerning and confirming what Diddy did to Cassie. This interview was very, very interesting. I want y'all to go ahead and check this out. Music mogul and rapper Sean Diddy Combs has faced four different lawsuits in recent weeks alleging sexual assault and abuse, all of which he has denied. The first of those came from singer Cassie Ventura, known as Cassie, who accused Combs of sexual abuse and sex trafficking during the decade they were together. NBC's entertainment correspondent Chloe Malas spoke ex exclusively to a longtime friend of Cassie's who said she witnessed some troubling incidents. Chloe. Good evening, Ellison. Singer, songwriter, activist Tiffany Red had been working with Cassie on an album when she first met Diddy and says that she witnessed him verbally abusing her friend. Following Cassie's settlement with Diddy, Red penned an open letter in Rolling Stone about her experience. She spoke to me about the events that she says traumatized her. I don't think people understand what it's like to be traumatized by somebody famous and rich. 
because you can't get away from them. Tiffany Red has written for the likes of Zendaya, Jason Derulo, and Jennifer Hudson. In 2015, she became friends with Cassie while writing songs for her album. At that point, Cassie and Diddy had been together for nearly eight years. In a lawsuit Cassie filed last month, she detailed the abuse she says Diddy committed, including physical assault. Red says although she did not know about the alleged physical assault while working with Cassie, she did witness verbal abuse on more than one occasion, one of which took place during Cassie's 29th birthday in 2015. Red says Diddy showed up at karaoke, where Cassie and a group of friends were celebrating. So he had her back into the corner, and he was like cussing her out with his hand in, his fit in her face. Later that night, Red, who was staying at Cassie's home, says she awoke to screaming. Oh, he's standing in the like living room area, and she's there, and he was like emotional singing. There you are. And I just was like, oh, he's talking to me. And I remember, like, I don't know if you know his, his what his voice sounds like, but, like, I felt like I was in the presence of his monster inside. And I remember, like, looking in his eyes, and I said to him, what did y'all do? Because I could see that she was, like, really sedated. That was the first time I'd ever seen her, like, high before. And then he says, tell your girl she wants some birthday And we were like... Well, I mean, he's saying this to me, and I'm like, well, she doesn't have to have sex with you if she doesn't want to. He was upset, like, you know, I guess that she didn't want to do with him whatever she, whatever he wanted. I don't know. I don't feel like I could advocate for myself in that moment. Like, I realized, like, oh, this guy is dangerous. Red says it was only a few months ago that Cassie told her what was really going on that night in 2015, that it all stemmed from the music executive wanting her to take part in what he called a freak-off against her will. What did Cassie tell you about these freak-offs? You know, that he would hire these, like, sex workers and, like, they would have, you know, sex with her or whatever and... He would watch and tell them what to do. In her lawsuit, Cassie alleges she was forced to participate in freak-offs throughout her relationship with Diddy. Red learning recently one horrific detail from Cassie. She told me the only time he was willing to do anything or work on her music, go through any um, plans, any of that, was when she had a freak-off. So all of our music, all my work, to find out that like I spent all these years writing these songs for him to, to rape my friend to, like, is just disgusting. In the lawsuit, Cassie detailed the physical abuse she says Diddy committed, including an instance where she was put in a hotel room for days to heal. Red says Cassie recently told her about Diddy giving her a black eye before the premiere of her 2016 film, The Perfect Match. I remember one time her telling me that I think it might have been The Perfect Match, that, that movie that she was in, and she told me that she had a black eye under her makeup. Do you believe Diddy is a dangerous person? Yes, I do. Why? I mean, look at his rap sheet. An attorney for Cassie declined to comment. Diddy's attorney did not respond. In 2015, Diddy was arrested on three counts of assault with a deadly weapon and other charges for allegedly beating up his son's football coach. Prosecutors declined to file felony charges related to that arrest. 24 hours after Cassie filed her lawsuit, she and Diddy announced that they had reached an undisclosed settlement. Combs released a statement saying, We have decided to resolve this matter amicably. I wish Cassie and her family all the best. His lawyer adding that the settlement was, quote, in no way an admission of wrongdoing. I mean, I just feel like it's PR. <laughs> he settled because he doesn't want to go to court. Diddy's music career spans three decades, including three Grammy Awards and the creation of Bad Boy Records, representing artists from Mary J. Blige to the late notorious B.I.G. In September, he was awarded MTV's Global Icon Award. But since the allegations surfaced, Hulu scrapped a reality series about his family, and the Recording Academy said they are considering to rescind his invite to this year's Grammys. You know, I think a lot of people, especially in, my, in, in the black community, are, you know, I've seen the narrative of, like, you know, they're just trying to take a black man down. And it's just like, that's not what this is about. That's not what this is about. This is about accountability and and um, a reckoning. Like, that's just the bottom line. As for what justice looks like? I think justice looks like Diddy being behind bars. And I also think that justice looks like everybody getting retribution for all of the things. The amount of therapy, like I just said, all of my, all of the moments, the time, like these are our careers. 
And Chloe is back with us now. You hear her saying justice looks like Diddy behind bars. Is there a possibility that could still happen? Where does the criminal case stand? So Cassie filed her federal civil suit here in New York. And the NYPD has come out and said that there is no investigation into Diddy right now. Now, that doesn't mean that the district attorney of Manhattan isn't looking into something or perhaps investigations going on behind the scenes. But publicly, on the record, no such investigation investigation has been confirmed. And also, there have been other lawsuits of some women coming forward with other similar accusations and allegations. And who knows if others might come forward as well. Remember, the Adult Survivors Act is set to expire at the end of this month in the state of California. And we know that Diddy, that is where he has primarily, primarily resided. So you never know if others might come forward between now and the new year. And you spent so much time talking with Tiffany. And you can tell, even watching that back, not being in the room with her, that she she has been so deeply impacted by what she says she witnessed. She has been able to sort of take this and turn it in a way, right? Can you explain that? So she calls herself an activist, right? She's not just a singer, songwriter um, who's worked with so many stars, like I mentioned, Zendaya, Jason Derulo, Cassie. You know, she is somebody that has started an organization called the 100 Percenters. And that's, she says, comes from the fact that she always gives 100%. And this is about advocating for equal pay and fair rights for those who are both artists and writers and music producers and helping also get them out of archaic music contracts. So she has turned her tragedy and her trauma into something positive, but she said that speaking out to NBC News, speaking out to us, has helped her heal, and she also wants to stand up for her friend Cassie and validate what's in that lawsuit. Amazing reporting. Chloe Malas, thank you so much. We appreciate it. All right, so you guys just watched that interview. I'm really glad that Tiffany is speaking out and that, you know, people are, you know, supporting her and supporting Cassie. Um, Brother Love is a straight-up demon, and people are seeing that more and more. And it's really, really sad that for so long, many in the mainstream had excuses for Brother Love, um, you know, which gave him the power to feel like he could just get away with anything. But I'm glad she's found her strength to speak up and take up for her friend. Again, it's very interesting that Cassie's other friends, her other big name celebrity friends, are really quiet. They're not saying much. They're not coming out to, to really defend her and support her. But I'm glad that Tiffany is speaking up for her. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. How do y'all feel about all of these stories? How do you guys feel about the whole Krishan and Blueface drama? How do y'all feel about DJ Envy possibly looking at jail time if he does not disclose, you know, um, his bank account info and the transactions? How do y'all feel about all of these sexual assault allegations that are coming out? Even if they're coming out later on in life, do you guys feel like the victims have the right to tell their stories, including the model Jaden, who was also speaking out about Method Man putting hands on her? So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. I look forward to reading y'all's comments down below. Thank you guys so much for the support. Please make sure to like the video. Feel free to share the video. Most importantly, please make sure that you're still subscribed to the channel, and I will talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so sell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, be sure to share, like, and subscribe.